Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It all depends on where you're listening to me from. My name is uh, Dr. Mumila Wa. I am a Yoruba daughter from Yoruba parents, and I come from Lagos. In fact, I come from Isaleko, the real McCoy of the Lagosians. My mother is also from Lagos, from Olowogbowo. Some of you may know it, some of you may not. My message today is to my friends, co-ministers, laborers, and the residents of Lagos, especially Lagos, the Igbo's residents in Lagos. It is with a hard felt mindset that I come out today to make this message. And I probably wouldn't have made it anyway, but as I was having my bath this morning, the Spirit of the Lord said, you should talk to your Igbo friends, family, co-workers, laborers, not just the ones in, in Nigeria, in Lagos, but wherever they may be, wherever an individual that calls himself or herself from Igbo descent should be able to hear this and think about it. We all know that the country we call Nigeria is a conglomerate of extractions the Igbo extractions, the Yoruba extractions, uh, extraction, the Middle Belt extraction, the Edo extraction, the Aqua Ibom extraction, and so on and so forth. And we all speak different languages. Therefore, it is not a Nigerian country. As a matter of fact, it's not a nation. Because if you want to understand what a nation is, a nation is where every individual in that particular nation speaks the same language. They understand one another. They have the same ethos, moral ethos, same cultures and traditions, and probably some mores. But look at the cosmopolitan country called Nigeria. We are different, very, very different. Yoruba cultures are different from the outside culture or the Marudas called the Fulanis were different, very different in every aspect of the world. And we're also different from the Igbos. Our cultures and traditions are different. You have Aces, we have Obas, you have Chiefs, we have Chiefs too, but we are very different. And what I wanted to let everybody know today, I know it might pinch some people, it might hurt some people, it might even make some people not to talk to me. I can understand that. In the last three years, since we have all been agitating for self-determination from the egregious and hegemonic ruling governance in Nigeria by the Fulanese, I know that the Igbos and the Yorubas, we have been clamoring for self-determination. We want to go. In fact, 52, 53 years ago, the, 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 the Igbos had wanted to go a long time ago. And this resulted <laughs> in a civil war. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a, a palatable thing for anybody. That being said, what is brewing now in Nigeria hasn't changed. Genocidal activities, egregious activities by the Fulanese. And we all say we want to go. We want to go. And it's not an easy thing to want to assert yourself as a nation a nation of one, one language, one tradition, one culture. Yet, the Fulanese, the Marudas, the intruders from Sahel that wanted to pin everybody down so that they can reap from what they did not sow are reluctant to let us go. And having said that, 
this last election that was rigged, we saw all the other things that were being done. Atiku and his adherents were planning to rig it. I'm sure the APC will do their own or they did their own. But I also saw that some Hebrews were hiding their PVC under some places. I saw it. They made this man take out the PVC where he was hiding it. So let's just agree that it was not a fair and an, an equitable election. And that's why Obi wants to go. The APC don't want to agree that they are lost or whatever it is. But that's not the message I wanted to register this afternoon or this morning. My Igbo friends, I've been talking to my Yoruba people in the last three years about what needs to be done, about what we need to focus on, what we need to do, and how we will all agree in one accord and tell the Fulanese that we want to go. I know some Yorubas don't want to go. The reason is best known to them because with everything that is on ground, nobody should tell them that it's too late in the day to stick our, net, our, neck, our necks out and call ourselves Nigerians. There's nothing called Nigeria. It's a geographical representation. Igbo do not feel very comfortable being Nigerians. Yorubas, at least I would say 80% of us, don't feel like we're in Nigeria. If we are, all of us will be in that country, thriving and flourishing. And because we cannot do that, a lot of us are in different nations all over the world. We are scattered because the Fulanese will not let us strive, will not let us flourish. They are degrading and denigrating every other extraction in that country. But my message is for my Igbo people today. We are friends. A lot of you are my friends. We are co-laborers. And we have even become families. But rumors have been milling around Lagos and in other parts of the country that you, the Igbos, are saying or asserting that Lagos is a no man's land. That it is ours. <laughs> I beg your pardon. How can Lagos be for the Hebrews? Are you kidding? Is that a joke? I don't think so. I think it's an arrant nonsense. I think it's a dirty slap on the faces of all of us that call ourselves a Lagosian. And I'm a Lagosian, as I've told you. My father hailed from Isaleko. My father belongs to the family that is called the Leti Washe. We are the ones, the, my family, my father's family or grandparents were the ones that takes this masquerade called Eyo in front of the Adimu. My mother's family belongs to the Adimu family. So if you say that Lagos is not for everybody, so where do you want all the Obas to go? To go to Enugu? To go to Nnewi? Abakaliki? Or where? Because Lagos has been in existence over 6,000 years, even before the British came in 1860. And there, were, there had been no connection between the Igbos and the Yorubas in Lagos for over 40, 50 years when, the, when even the, 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 the white men, the British came to start trading in Lagos. I'm therefore so disappointed that some of you Igbos that have intermarried with the Yorubas and I can't blame anybody. Love is a mysterious thing. A black, a, a black man in America is marrying an Indian, a Japanese, but he, he will not go to Japan and say that they hold the same place together. It is Aaron nonsense. I don't know where you have the impunity 
the audacity, the godlessness to say that Lagos is the Hebrews. You own Lagos. How can you own Lagos? Are you a DBC, Abiola, Akiola? You are Shukubedi? You are Namdi? You are Nena? You are Ngozi? And you, are, you want to be a Lagosian? Yes, you are married to a Lagosian. You are married to a Yoruba person. But that does not mean you own Lagos. Have you ever seen any Yoruba claiming that they own in a way with the Igbos? Claiming that they own Enugu with Lagos? Or claiming that they own Aqua Ibom with the Aqua Ibomites? I know the Yorubas are very accommodating. And sometimes too accommodating. Overly generous in spirit. They sell their lands. They allow you to buy the choicest places wherever you want. Because we have a different ethos. They call it Omoluabi. Omoluabi means somebody that is so open-minded that is ready to share his, even his bedroom with a stranger. And if I might say it, you are strangers in Lagos until you become residents. And the fact that Lagosians allow you to rent their places, give you their lands, that does not give you the authority, the impunity, the audacity to now claim that Lagos is yours. It's not your land. You can go to Enugu, Nunewi, and call it what you want. But Lagos, it's for Lagosians. Yes, there's been intermarriages. But how many Lagosians have you seen that will come, come to Abakaliki to buy land, to build industry, or whatever? If you have come to Lagos to build your industry, to make your money, you should be even be thanking Lagosians for giving you that, uh, that permissibility. The parable says that you do not bite the finger that fits you. If you think Lagos has not done you well, you have not made your revenues, your money in Lagos, and it's not worth it, by all means, you can take yourself back to wherever in Igbo land. And I mean that. If Lagos is not good for you, it has not blessed you, you can go back to where you, you, you came from. But to now start challenging Lagosians. So you want their Obas to park and go to Enugu and claim Enugu with you? Go to Abakaliki and claim Abakaliki with you? Or you want to throw them into heaven and ask God to catch them? What kind of nonsense is that? It's the greatest insult that the Yorubas in Lagos will receive from the Hebrews. You are not grateful at all. And I'm so damn sad and disheartened about it. Yes, the Yorubas are very generous. Look at, go, look and look at us. Even the full and probably are laughing that this, this Yorubas don't know what we are doing. We know what we are doing. We believe that the land, even though we call it our own, it belongs to the Lord. But the same Lord has designated every, every nation, every tribe, where he wants them to be. God could have taken us to Ine, we are Bakaliki and Enugu. He didn't. He gave us Lagos as Yorubas. He gave us Oshun as Yorubas. He gave us Ondo as Yorubas. He gave us Ijabode as Yorubas. Ilefe as Yorubas. He could have given us the north. Dry, barren north. But he didn't. He gave us a luscious land, a prosperous place. And you Igbos, you've been accommodated so friendly. You have been accommodated to the point that people might even think the Yorubas are stupid. We are not stupid. When a man extends a hand of fellowship and friendship to you, and you consider it stupid, you are not wise. Because if you bite it, things will turn around to swallow you. It's not going to bite you are pushing the Yoruba beyond the Ruby common sense. The fact that we have intermarried, some of your women have married our men, therefore, 
your grandchildren is automatically Lagosians. Does not mean that you own Lagos. I know so many Hebrews that have Igbo, 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 Igbo men that are married Yoruba girls. The Yorubas then claim that because they married an Igbo man, Abaka Liki Enugun, or wherever in the Igbo land, is theirs. They just believe that they have formed a family with an Igbo man. But because your Igbo woman, girl, lady, is married to a, a Yoruba person, he now owns Lagos. The children is, is a Lagosian. But that doesn't mean that the Igbos own Lagos. I want you to fear God because a war has gone. Another war is brewing. It's brewing with the Fulanese. It will not make a damn sense for us to lure each other into another confrontation. There shouldn't be a confrontation between the Igbos and the Yorubas. We are going to play into the hands of the Fulani and they will play us like they are playing cards. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what they want us to do. So if we have common sense, both of us, the Igbos and the Yorubas, let's sit down and think, and think strategically. Lagos does not belong to you. And Yorubas, you will not see them vying to call themselves Igbos. They are satisfied. Maybe that's our problem. We are so satisfied in our Yoruba land that we don't want to go anywhere. It is this same attitude that the Fulanese also have. That the, that, that the, the, the whole of Nigeria belongs to them. And now you Igbo too want to say that Lagos belongs to you just because you have been accommodated. You have been given everything that you, you ever needed. Why, why, why don't you turn Abakaliki and Nugu in Newi into a mega Dubai, turning into New York, since you have the temerity, you have the skill, you have the business acumen, go home and develop it like you have developed Lagos. And if you think that you want to take what you have in Lagos, by all means, do so and see whether Lagos will not continue to function. It is because Lagos has been functioning. That's why you stay. Do you realize that even in the north, you are not really received or accommodated like you are accommodated in Lagos? The Fulanese, the houses, kill Igbos in droves. They will tell you if you don't live within the next one month, they will start killing. Have you ever been hurt, decimated by the Yoruba people? All the Yorubas have done, even in Lagos, is to give you, to prepare you for success and victory. If you can achieve the same victory that you are now achieving and enjoying in Lagos, you can go back and stay where your DNA actually placed you. You do not see a Yoruba clamoring to take your land in Igbo. Why do you want to? Because they sell it to you? You think they are hungry? Our moral ethos does not give you the audacity to think that we are fools. We are not. And if the worst comes to the worst, we don't want to go at it again because it will not pay any one of us. Because the Fulanese are waiting for both the Igbos and the Yorubas to have a talk of war. And I don't think that will make any sense to either of us. So, my message to all the Igbos in Lagos, in that contraption called Nigeria, is to calm down and to have, let your, your, your spirit, your sensibility, let it tell you that the fact that you are accommodated in a place. Yes, a lot of us are in America. Igbos are in America. Yorubas are in America. Can you tell America that you own America? Yes, you are a citizen. I am a citizen of America. But I do not own America because I've been there for 40 years. Some of you have been in, in Lagos for 50, 60 years with your grandparents or with your grand-grandfather. But that does not give you the temerity 
to claim, to assert, or to impugn that Lagos is yours or is no man's land. Where does Akito come from? From Abakaliki? Where does Bajabi Amila come from? The idiots may not say anything about it. But is it from Enugu? Are we, are we struggling with any one of your, any one of you in your land saying that we want to become permanent owner or resident there? We are satisfied with being your bus. And we are satisfied for, with where God has placed us. We are not struggling with anybody. You, you will see your bar trading in, in the north. If the worst come to the worst, they will come back and come home. You both should have that mindset. If Lagos is no longer benefiting you, you can pack your bag and baggage and go back home. Since you know that nobody is struggling with you in your land, nobody wants to go to Igbo land and claim it because we know we know we're not Igbo. I have never been anywhere. I've been to Enugu. That's it once. Ever since then, I don't want to live there. I don't think I have any business there. But because you felt like Lagos is a thriving, flourishing, cosmopolitan state, most of you came in droves. And Lagos is so, Lagosians are so accommodating. They're so friendly. Some of them even sold their father's houses to accommodate you. And you think they are foolish because you gave them billions and millions. My friends, when it comes to heritage, no amount of money is worth it. And if the worst come to the worst, and there is a fight, everybody will have to go back to where they come from. You can take your land, your houses, your industry, if you can, and go and plant it in Igbo land. And I mean that. Don't let, let, let's not brew what we, we both cannot finish. Because the Fulanis are waiting for both of us to go into all this nonsense. So, my fellow Igbo's friends, start telling one another, educate one another. History needs to be taught in that contraption called Nigeria. Our children do not know the history of their great great grandfathers. Lagos does not belong to the Igbo's. Get your acts together. It does not belong to Igbo's, it belongs to the Yorubas. It belongs to the. There, there, there are three or two fractions of, of Lagosians, those that they brought from slavery, from Brazil. That's why we have the Gomez. You have the Fernandez. But there is no Igbo that could say categorically and sensibly and godly and righteously that the Igbos <laughs> own Yoruba, uh, Lagos or they develop Lagos before you ever came. Probably 1890 or 1900, Lagos was already established. Trading going on, railway, newspaper. So you came, you saw that it's good, and you start enjoying the resources, the facility that were there, and you build upon it. Yes, it's okay. We build in America too. We build in London. If you go to London, you will see thousands of Yorubas. They cannot. They, they can only say they are permanent resident. They cannot say that they own England with the British, with the English, or with the Wales, or the Scottish. So what other nonsense is that? That Lagos is no man's island. Whose island is it? Igbo's island? Shakiri's island? Ibibio's island? Aqua Ibom's island? Oh no, my friends. Lagos belongs to the Yorubas. And it is ours. And it's going to be ours to the kingdom come. To Jesus. As a Christian, when Jesus Christ will come back second time around, or rapture, he will still say that Lagos belongs to the Lagosians and not the Igbos. So my friends, some of you will return. If you say this, you might call me. Maybe we need to do history. History 101. Lagos History 101. And then you can teach me and tell me what your research gives you about Lagos. 
But I'm telling you for a fact, I'm a bona fide qualified DNA established Lagosians. My parents are from Isadeko and Olowogbowo in Lagos, central Lagos. The Olusis are just a stone throw from my house, or by Iga Olusi, the, the, the palace of Olusi. My father and great grandfather had a fight with those that do not want the king Adele to reign. My grandfather. So you cannot now tell me that I, 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 I come from somewhere or I drop from the heaven. Lagos belongs to the Lagosians. Oh. My friends, in Newi, in Abakaliki, in Enuguni, wherever you all are from, Lagos does not belong to the Hebrews. I want you to get that straight today and forever. I don't have much to say. I'm hoping that we will strategize together as two different distractions and fight the Maruda. The egregious activities of the Fulani is enough for both of us to bond at this point and fight them and declare that you're going to exit that contraption called Nigeria. That's what I expect. Not this Aran nonsense that you own Lagos and Lagos is no man's island. If it is no man's land, how come all our kings and our chiefs are there? Do you find the Yorubas in any of Igbo's land claiming to be Eze? Please, do not insult the totality of the Yorubas. I think we deserve an apology for you to be claiming that Lagos belongs to the Hebrews. I don't have much to say, but I hope when you hear this, you will sit, you will think about it, and you let the Spirit of God commune with you. As big as Saudi Arabia is, the Israelites will not go there and say because they have lived there before. It is theirs. God has positioned everybody where he wants them to be. Hebrews, if you are tired of Lagos, by all means, you can go back. You can carry your houses, your mansions, carry it, and go and plant it in the Igbo land. The Yorubas will not worry. We are friendly people, and we are very accommodating. But our Omolua B, our generosity of spirit, must not be taken for granted or be counted as stupidity. We are not stupid. We can turn around and be otherwise. We don't want to be wild because it's not in our nature to be wild and crazy. But we could be if we are pushed to the wall. Anybody could be if they are pushed to the wall. Please, my Igbo friends, tell your friends, moms, not to push us. We are no fools. And we will not suffer fools gladly. Thank you. It's me, your friend, your sister, your co-workers in the, in the vineyard of Christ, Dr. Wumilawa, proper Legosian, genuine Legosian, authentic Omeko. I'm a Legosian. Body, brain, wise, everything about me is, is Legos. Omeko Gidinimi, Omeko Atata. And I know that some of you will understand that. Thank you, and may God bless you. Amen.